there is no room for personal um, choice anymore. The system will bring it to you automatically, very fast, uh, which of course increases the quality of the of the border check, increases the, the, the facilitates the work of the of the border guard. But politically very, very important, it will allow all member states to trust that other member states, other Schengen states, will perform exactly the same uh, type of, of border check. Uh, and when we talk about Schengen and about mutual trust, uh, that is absolutely fundamental, that we make that step towards, uh, indeed, full confidence uh, that every Schengen state performs the same kind of checks. One thing that we discussed internally um, only a few days ago uh, is this whole issue of handbooks, because you know that, that of course, the legal basis of each of the systems requires a handbook. Uh, you have your SIS handbook, your VIS handbook, etc., EES. Um, with, with all this, um, uh, this articulation of further systems, um, the handbook approach may not be the best solution, because you end up with an entire pile of books uh, where a border guard would tell you, well, hang on, what, what, what I'm supposed to do with all this? So perhaps the better approach is to um, look at this from the perspective of the user, uh, to have a, a, an approach where we build modules, put it in a database, and then you have one handbook, not for SIS, but one handbook for the border guard, where the border guard will see, okay, this is going to happen for me, these are the changes and you have a chapter on SIS and on VIS and all the rest of it. Sounds like a simple idea, but uh, and it is of course very simple, but usually simple ideas are the best ones. Thank you very much indeed, Rob, for kicking off this session and reminding us that interoperability is not just a complicated phenomenon, but a complex program with several factors that uh, have implications and also a number of institutions involved so that it really becomes an added value to those which is aimed at. We as data protection authorities don't want to keep you from doing your work, but we want to make sure that the work you do, you do it on the right basis, that the necessity and proportionality part of it, right kind of harnessing technology, like Mr. Lechecht said in the morning, but you know, in a responsible way. And that's also something that came out from more from the user perspectives in the earlier panels. Okay, it's one thing to design the system, on the broad European level, but then how to actually make it work. That's where a lot of work still is necessary. But more importantly, in the context of how I'm speaking today, entry-exit system and ETS, when we look at the numbers of records that are in these systems, are providing a substantial step. I started a small step, now I'm saying substantial step towards interoperability and we'll be putting in place quite significant uh, elements of the components that will in future likely be leveraged for the purposes of implementing interoperability by EULISA. So through the merging of these systems we'll reach a circumstance that the systems become more than the sum of their parts. We're seeing synergies here and we're seeing that it's not just entry exit system, ETS, VIS, etc. anymore. Together they are more than, they are, than the sum of their parts. Again, work is already ongoing. We can say that entry exit system is the very, very beginning, a small step indeed, but nevertheless a, a small step towards interoperability and that work is already ongoing. Well, Abraham Lincoln once said that the best way to predict the future is to actually create it. And there he just did not meant the, uh, uh, the, uh, the tenacity, but also the power of thoughts and imagination to create something. Uh, we feel that the uh, security ecosystem is undergoing an accelerated process of digital transformation. This process, uh, on the one hand, is necessary because it allows to deal with a number of complexities that uh, are uh, inherent to the new uh, security environment, but also introduces new vulnerabilities and risks. Most importantly, two key strategic technologies in our view, cybersecurity and artificial intelligence. Cybersecurity is key to secure the different elements 
that are involved in IBM and also uh, to secure the overall system that we hope will be the end result of our, let's say, policy exercise. Uh, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence uh, will be the future. This morning someone asked, is the future already here? Yes, the future is already here. We need to consider the use of AI systems by law enforcement uh, authorities. We need to consider use of AI by malevolent actors. So we need to model how they could use it, how we could contrast the systems that they use the, those type of software. And also we need to protect data set, we need to protect algorithms from outside tampering. If we look at identity and biometrics, then obviously this is of key importance in border processes. Uh, but looking at from a higher perspective, you see biometrics and identity being deployed in many more market segments and applications uh, for e-government, access to e-government services, in the financial sector, KYC, uh, in the online world with all kinds of digital platforms, Facebook, Instagram and whatever. Uh, so we're living in a time where you actually don't have a choice other than to provide your personal information if you want to get access to these services. Yes, artificial intelligence is very promising, very interesting. Machine learning, deep learning techniques are very interesting. But why not using or taking advantage of the expertise of the community and uh, conducting what is called semi-supervised or expert-guided machine learning? So inputs from the experts, from the community border guards, forensic experts, in order to develop uh, uh, even better and inclusive uh, system. If there is a need to override the technology, it may be in the future even more challenging than it is today. And we have to develop the border guards, the skills and the organization, the atmosphere that the border guards are really ready to make the decision when needed, so that we we trust the technology, of course, but, but we trust it in an optimal way. But it has been proven that the more you train, which means the more data you give to the, to the um, algorithm, the better result you get. So somehow the difficulty is not to have the machine around, it's to feed the beast. And some of the feeding may be in contradiction with privacy in general. Do you think there is a case that could be defended or could not be defended? What would be uh, your uh, or the panel's suggestion for how to solve that problem? My point was in order to further improve the performance, because there are still room for improvements, uh, taking into account the diversity, being transparent about the data sets which have been used, not necessarily super big data set, by the way, depending on the techniques you are using, it's an important step we have to promote uh, in order to predict and have some reliability about the performance results we can expect from the system. But by the way, the biggest challenge we are facing with artificial intelligence is to hire people uh, doing this. Uh, the last one we were able to hire is an astrophysicist, uh, and now he's applying his techniques to law enforcement technology. So, yeah, it's, it's difficult to find uh, clever people uh, developing such kind of algorithm, definitely. The most important uh message that I heard today from almost all panelists is that uh, the future starts already today and actually it started. So it's great to see consensus that now is the moment to act rather than waiting something, not, know, not known what, and that basically what we do today or what we won't do today to great extent uh, shapes the future. The future of border management, the future of internal security, the future of migration management. In Europe, and this is very important that we have common understanding that we need to act. So think big and get smart. Thank you very much.